Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Coffee Run for Thursday. Really awesome to have you guys joining us today on this fine, fine, freaking hot already day here in the land of Mildura. So I live in a tiny little country town in the middle of nowhere in Victoria. And we had a hot top yesterday of 46, 46 degrees the day before that. And today's scheduled top is 45. Um, Can't wait for the cool change that is coming through on Saturday, which is going to only be 33. It's probably going to feel like jumper weather after we've... um, acclimate to the the most ridiculously hot weather we've had in in a few years actually in a row. So today I wanted to chat with you about uh, creating the space for stuff. Now if you have ever had the flu or a cold right you know how you kind of get really congested and you can't breathe properly and it tends to kind of constrict your lungs and it, and it makes you feel really lethargic and crappy right. If we're honest, I'm just checking that this is working uh, on my computer over here. So um, it can feel like you're often like wading through quicksand when you've got a cold of some description or generally just feeling like shit. So what do we need to do? Well, typically what we'll do is we'll do something that gets rid of the congestion. We'll put on humidifiers. You'll do those, um, you know, the things that you put the eucalyptus oil, like the diffusers and whatever, to help open up the airways and clear the way and create that decongestant so that we can actually evacuate that crap out of our heads and out of our bodies in order for us to be able to breathe properly. So it's kind of interesting that we allow a whole lot of clutter, congestion and shit, essentially, in our worlds, in our lives, in our businesses, in our relationships, in our money stuff and things like that, even in our wardrobes, you know, all of this kind of thing. So what I thought I would chat with you about today is a little bit about clearing the way in order for the good stuff to come in. Now... I'm going to let you in on a little bit of stuff that I was working through yesterday, which is, you know, business is a, is essentially the best personal development course that you could ever possibly do, right? You need to really get out of your own way. You've really got to deal with your own shit because everything that you're going through, absolutely everything has everything to do with you. It's all the reflection. It's all the mirror of whatever it is that's going on. So where in your world, hey Tiana, nice to see you, Uh, where in your world are you holding on to stuff based on fear, based on sneaky lack or scarcity mindset stuff? So I've been, okay, I'll I'll, I'll share what I was working through yesterday. So I've been really proud in the past, uh, the fact that I I built you know I built a great business. I've done multi millions of dollars in sales, helped tens of thousands of people for free. I've worked with thousands of clients over the years. I've done countless number of online programs and blah 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 blah. And one of the things that I've been quick to let go of has been uh, you know not doing you know maybe doing programs differently or different beliefs and stuff like that. But I had this realization yesterday, there's this sneaky little thing. So I've been really good over the years at leveraging off the stuff that I put out there and building my email list. And I've spoken for a number of years about the fact that this kind of provides you with a bit of a safety net, right? So if something happens to Facebook, if Facebook shuts down your page or if Facebook closes down your group or if LinkedIn decide that you're... Um, no longer fit to be on their platform or whatever, you've still got a way of being able to communicate with your audience and communicate with people who have said, yes, I'd like to hear more from you, please. So I've been really proud of the fact that the list has grown over the years, you know, to 25,000. I was really happy when it hit 2,500 originally and then 5,000, then 7,500, and then it got 15,000, then 20,000, 25,000. I'm like, yeah, 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 this is really great. And I remember at the start of 2015, I sent out an email to my list essentially saying, look guys, 
you know what, I really love you, but if you're, if you're unwilling to do the work with all of the free stuff that I put out, right? I put out a lot of free stuff, a lot of free content, a lot of uh, valuable hints, tips, motivation, whatever. So look, you know, if you're not, I don't care if you never buy from me because I know that some of you will, but if you're not actually going to do anything with the stuff that I teach you, then everything that's coming into your inbox from me is actually just noise. And I actually think the same thing with people who like your Facebook page and stuff like that. So I invited these some like 25,000 people to unsubscribe at the start of 2015. So I totally gave them the power. You know, if you, if you want to hang around, then that's great. I know some of you open up my emails once a week and read through all of them in, in like a, a Nicola binge. Um, but some of you haven't opened my stuff for a really long time. So this is my invitation for you to unsubscribe so that I can set you free out into the world emotionally, energetically, and technically uh, to go learn from someone, go follow someone who you actually resonate with. Because, you know, if you're not looking at my stuff, then obviously there's, there's some kind of, you know, there's a, there's a disconnect there. So that was 2015. Now I gave them the power. I gave the people in the email list the power to do anything and I didn't try and control it or anything like that and last week I noticed that there was um there was a whole lot of bounces so when you um when you've got a CRM uh, I use Infusionsoft personally some of you might use Active Campaign or Entreport or Office Autopilot or whatever they the heck they're called MailChimp perhaps you sometimes get these reports that say X percentage of people have, you know, bounced out. They might have subscribed, but maybe their email is not working or they haven't opened them or whatever, right? So I had this report where there was like, I don't know, there was a lot of, of bounces and I kind of just ignored it. I'm like, yeah, whatever, whatever. Meanwhile, I deleted all all of the previous people that had so I deleted three and a half thousand people from the list so I culled that and then I culled it again and then I culled it again and yesterday so it was sitting at around I don't know must have been sitting at around 13,000 because this is after the cull the cull the cull uh now this at this point right to to give you to put you in the picture like my stomach is like I'm feeling that physical reaction around, oh my God, I'm deleting all these people. What if, you know, what if nobody new comes in? What if no one buys? You know, what if I'm completely, you know, just going like, and there are people in there that might have bought from me or whatever. And, you know, the, 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 the fear mindset, hey, Christy, the fear mindset, hey, Joe, kicked in. And I'm just like, bleh, 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 vomiting all over the place, like, not literally, but metaphorically. And even though logically I'm like, all right, you know what? We've got to create the space, not for any other reason. It's just like chopping back the dead wood, right? Clearing out the dead wood so that the new growth can come forth. So yesterday I decided to get over myself and all of the bounces. So again, like another three and a half thousand. See, it still makes me want to swallow hard. <laughs> Three and a half thousand people that were bouncing, I'm just like, okay, this is ridiculous. You know, if, if, if for whatever reason they're not even seeing my emails hit their inbox, I'm just going to delete them. So I culled another three and a half thousand. So meanwhile, the list is, it feels like I'm back in, you know, startup mode. It's really, really interesting. But here's the beautiful thing, right? get rid of the dead wood in order to create the space for the new growth. You know, that's why there's uh, natural, you know, natural occurrences in nature, hence natural, where there's a lot of stuff that happens like fires, natural fires or whatever that happen. not arson, natural fires that happen in order to create that cycle of new fresh growth, right? So from your business, where are you holding on to things with almost like a vice-like grip because you're worried, you're afraid, you're scared, you're, you know, you're, you're hanging on to that thing for fear of, of new stuff not coming through or the, or the new people not coming through. All the existing people going, uh, you know, the fear that they're not going to go, oh, fucking finally, you know, thank God you've actually shown up, you know, now that you've created this space, you know, they can kind of start seeing his stuff, right? Christy, refreshing, um, 
Uh, that's a, uh, yes, it is more refreshing today than it was yesterday. Um, you know, I've been doing this for a really long time. I've been doing this since 2010. So there was like an immense sense of pride and kind of like validation in the size of my list where here's what we know, you know, no one gives a flying shit about the size of your email list. They just want to know that you can help them. Uh, your potential clients don't give a flying shit about your potential list. They just want to know that you can help them. So, you know, yes, I think it's important to grow your list. Hey, Beck, super important to grow your email list and super important to have that other area, that other realm of being able to stay in contact with people and, and add value and, you know, stay top of mind. But if you've got people who haven't opened your stuff for a year, freaking unsubscribe them. You know, don't even unsubscribe them, actually. Just delete them. Like, just delete, 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 delete and clear the space for the new people to come in. Uh, so that's one thing. I guess the other thing how this relates, if we think about money, using this metaphor in business around fear, right, where have you been holding yourself back, you know, maybe hoarding money, uh, creating clutter around money because you're afraid that no more is going to come in? So I have, I've invested a significant amount of money uh, in, in mentoring over the years and sometimes I get that feeling even now when it comes to, you know, working with a new mentor and really kind of go, you know, throwing myself off the cliff it's like well hang on a second like I know I know that there's always going to be more money coming in it's it's the way that the, it's the way that money cycles it's the way that energy cycles it's like the seasons right you know that you have winter before you have summer and it's always darkest before the dawn and you know every other cliche that we can talk about with the yin yang stuff but with money sometimes we can be holding on to shit that we don't need to be holding on to and that can be clogging up the money. So in your purse or in your wallet or wherever it is that you have your money. So this is my, I have an international, <laughs> now I sound a little bit like a princess. Uh, I have my international purse. So in my international purse lives my passport, my, my monogrammed very special purse. Uh, it's got my pen, my passport lives in there, my credit cards live in there, I've got my US dollars in there, I've got a few Australian dollars and that's pretty much it. Oh, I've got my express entry into the country passes because I hate standing in those lines. Um, so, you know, it's pretty empty really except for the things that need to be in there. So, and it still smells really good. So, for you... Have you got, the thing that I do regularly is I make sure that the receipts are out. I make sure that the clutter is out. I make sure that there is room and space, that there, like that, that my notes are all in order and it might sound a little OCD, but my notes are in order, whether it's American dollars or Aussie dollars, and it's all kind of like neat and tidy and organized because if I want more of that to come in, I want it to have a nice space to kind of come into, right? So energetically, like money is an energy. So if you've got clutter around anything, then you've got to get rid of it. So if you have got bills that come in that you allow to pile up on your desk, get rid of them. So Christy, great point actually. So I had an invoice from you. Um, so Christy does has a, a virtual assistant agency and, and I've got some one of her people doing some of my work. And one of the best things that you can do around money, in my opinion, is if you're thinking like a million dollar business owner, they don't get their bills coming in and going, mm, can't pay that this week. Most people, most, I'm, I'm talking in a, you know, maybe in a, in a slightly idealistic world, but I want to act like when I am back at making a million dollars a year, two million a year, three million a year, whatever, when bills come in, I just want them paid. I don't want them sitting on my desk. I don't want sending, them sitting in a tray. I just want them in and out, like gone. So invoice came in from Christy and I'm just like, oh yeah, it's not due till next week or whatever, but you know what, just pay it, get it done. There was something else that hit my desk. I'm like, yep, just pay that, get that done. So there's, there's no kind of blocks, speed bumps or anything like that in the way because we know that if you are creating a space and, you, and if you're expecting that more 
money, then what you need is going to come in. Then you don't need to sit there going, oh crap, you know, I really can't pay that till the due date. The other really interesting thing about that, guys, is that if you have, um, if you're taking that stance, right? So if you're paying for things, if you are leading the way energetically with how you want your clients to treat you, okay? So if you want your clients just to pay you when they get an invoice or pay in advance or pay in a timely manner, if you want people to go, you know what, I love your stuff. Yes, I'm in. Let's do it. And they give you money really quickly. Then you need to be doing that yourself. So if you haven't got money or clients or things like that flowing, then have a look at where you're kind of creating congestion. You know, like where's the, where's the snot? You know, where's that congestion happening? Because Often, if you're doing that in one area of your life, then it's going to mirror out into other areas of your life. Sandra, you also shouldn't keep knives on your bench or you lose money. Oh, wow, really? Interesting. Well, I'm really glad I don't leave knives on my bench ever. Hashtag little kids. Um, Yeah, really interesting to know. And I hadn't thought about it being being a, a feng shui thing, but it probably... That kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Yes, don't leave your knives on the bench, people. Uh, not just for safety reasons, but for the, all of the energetic reasons. So the only other thing that I wanted to share with you today is I have, I'm, I'm particularly a creature of, of habit, you know, and of, of, of discipline. And I do things, I, I tend to do things in a certain way. And this year I decided that I'm doing a whole lot of things differently and it's kind of like it's it's kind of like a fire has kind of gone through everything and like a self lit fire i lit the fire burn it all to the ground in in lots of different ways so i'm not teaching a lot of the stuff that i've taught in the past i'm i'm literally just teaching this stuff that fires me up that i know adds massive value that's really exciting and really fun doing it in a way that i love to consume training information mentoring whatever whatever inspiration so part of that i decided that my office has been set up in the same way for the last five and a half years i had a desk that had had it was an ikea and a white ikea desk and it had water spilt on it a little while ago and somehow it had gotten underneath the laminate and there was laminate peeling off now I am someone who likes very nice things. Um, I like things to be nice and clean and clear. That I'd put up with this freaking desk looking like a piece of crap for maybe like five years, right? Because I hadn't found the right desk yet. La la la. So I decided at the start of this year to rearrange my office. I moved, like you guys see, you know, I've got different things around and the and the camera angles are a bit different at the moment. So I moved everything around. I had the desk over here, and so over here that's my new desk doesn't look very exciting on here it looks fabulous compared to what was there oops I really like it so where I'm going with that if we can get the tripod to work excellent was this desk I was like oh I need to have a new desk and I had an email come through and I was like oh my god there's my desk so I bought it picked it up set it up I got rid of my desktop it's sitting on the floor because I'm like, that was a safety thing. I was holding on to that because of habit where I work off my laptop all the time. So there were things that I've gotten rid of off my desk, clearing and cleaning the space, putting things away in cupboards. I don't need everything out on display. This stuff that's up on here, I've got, um, you know, things that need to be up on here or whatever. But, you know, I guess the point is, is that with a, a nice, clean, clear desk, with a nice, clean, clear space, a nice, clean, clear head, nice, clean, clear from clutter, purse and wallet, it helps you to bring in more of the good stuff. If you know anything about energy work and energy cleansing, you know, we want to clear all all of that crap out as well, because the clearer we can be, the more energy uh, we can we can bring down the more downloads we have the more connected we are to God source universe whatever it is that um, you whatever words language you want to use 
So I create the space and then allow the good stuff to come in. If there's anything that you've been hanging on to, do some work on it. Go, well, what is it that I'm really afraid of? And chances are it comes straight back to lack, limitation, and all of that sort of stuff, which you guys, you know, you can let that stuff go. We know that there's more people coming through. doesn't matter how hard up you are financially. You know the tide's going to turn and it can all turn on a dime. If you believe, if you trust, if you do the work and then do the work, right? So do the work first, clear the space and everything else. But then you've got to get out there and put yourself out there. Then you've got to do the work. You've got to answer the proposals. You've got to, you know, actually take the steps. You've got to put yourself out there, do the lives, do the marketing, do the things, do the following up, yada, yada, yada. But don't do things from a place of fear. Do things from a place of being nice and clean and clear, knowing that more good stuff is going to come in. Excellent, Christy. I'm really glad. Beck, so much. Yes. Yay, Sandra. Thanks for the feng shui tip. All right, everybody. I'm going to love you and leave you. I've got a client rolling up here in a couple of minutes. So I think you know what you need to do. Create the space, get clean and clear physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, businessy. Uh, maybe it's time to do an email list, Carl, knowing that more amazing people are going to be coming through. Um, Most importantly, though, get out there, help some people, make shit happen, go get visible, and let's do it. If you haven't enrolled yet, which I know some of you have not, in the Rebel With A Cause, you can see some stuff going on around that at the moment. We start on Monday, so uh, Monday week. So get out there, help some people, make it happen, and I will talk to you all really soon. Bye.